A forced queen trap on move six. I don't think I've ever seen that before. I don't think I have. That, that's fascinating to me. What's up, guys? I'm going to play one or two more rating climb games here. See if we can approach 1100. Let's go ahead and get two pawns in the center. Okay, and our opponent's playing the Pierts or the Perk. I don't actually know the correct way to pronounce it, but um, I'm going to show you guys a setup. I've played it before, and I kind of like this approach. We play f3, which is a little bit weakening of the dark squares, but one of the ways we deal with that is by immediately putting our bishop here, so we can always drop it back if we need to, and it kind of controls everything. And usually the queen will go to the dark square as well and also help out. Now, I was kind of expecting to see g6. Okay, so our opponent's doing some weird stuff. They're not going for the typical setup, so I'm not going to be able to do what I was going to show you guys, but that's fine. Uh, we will just continue developing normally. So that's the nice thing about this. You don't have to continue attacking over here like I was going to. You can also just develop your pieces and, and uh, you know, play some regular chess that way. So if we take, uh, it kind of opens up Black's Bishop for them, which I don't really like. I think pushing is going to make this Bishop have a tough, uh, tough time figuring out where it's going to go. Of course, they can always feed in Keto, but even there, it doesn't have much of a future right now. So whenever I see a Knight jump forward, I always want to ask myself the question, what happens if I attack it? Uh, and in this case, it looks like knight to a6 is the only move. Would I be willing to give up my bishop for that knight? Um, and I think I might be, because it messes up the pawn structure. And so that's definitely something I'm considering. Also, because I've positioned my pawns on light squares, this bishop doesn't really have like a great place to go at the moment, right? Like I can go here, 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 but I'm not really going to be doing much. And so maybe that does make sense. Get rid of this knight, trade off that bishop, and continue developing and, and go, go on with the game with a kind of a permanent pawn structure weakness. So I think I am going to do that. Go ahead and take the knight. And, you know, whenever a, the pawns change, you want to ask yourself, like, how does that affect the features in the position? So, for example, the B file now is open for black. So rook to B8 could be a move that my opponent plays. Now, if they played it right now, I think I would probably just play b4 and be pretty happy. So I'm not concerned about that at the moment. But, uh, you know, I'm just going to kind of keep keep thinking through that. I could develop my knight. I could also play queen to d3 and attack this kind of weak pawn. And I kind of like the idea of that. I think I will go ahead and do that right away. Just put some pressure on it. It's not easy for black to defend if they push it forward. And probably go queen to a6 anyway and potentially just take it. And, you know, one of the things I always talk about, develop your pieces as quickly as you can. This is a unique position in that the center is locked up. So what that means is it slows down the pace of the game. So super quick, speedy development is not necessarily uh, the top priority in the position, right? So that's a very big difference is, you know, if this pawn was still here and maybe these got traded and the center is starting to get opened up, I would be much more likely to prioritize developing my knight and castling. But because it's locked up, I'm... I'm okay, you know, slowing that down a little bit. I'm not going to delay, you know, developing forever, but I will throw in a move like this and attack a pawn uh, if I think it makes sense, all right? But now that it's been uh, defended, I will continue with the development. And probably going to castle kingside only because there's an open file here, or half open file, I should say, where I might get attacked. Like if you imagine if I castle queenside, rook to b8, and I do have to deal with this attack. So I think I'm leaning towards castling this way. <clears throat> now, if black takes this now, I could actually trap the queen if I do castle, so I'm not worried about that. And so I think I will go ahead and do that. So this is what I was talking about. If the queen takes, I can bring this rook over. And if you look carefully, the queen has nowhere to go can't retreat on the file because the rook controls it. You can't go here and you can't take any of this. We would just be trapped. So that's a poisoned pawn and black cannot take that. You might play bishop b5. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking they were going to play. So the issue if I take it is that black can fix their pawn structure. That being said, um, I still am considering that only because it's a pretty annoying bishop. But I'm thinking what I might do instead is just drop my queen back and then maybe chase it away with like a4. Uh, the only issue is, so the reason they couldn't take this before is because the queen gets trapped. So what I'm going to see now is if I go here and they take this, let's just say I take with the queen, 
then the queen could come down. And it's no longer going to get trapped because my knight would be under fire. I could also take with the knight. And then if the queen takes, I can go there. Yeah, that still traps the queen, doesn't it? So either way, the queen would get trapped. So I'm still fine there. So with that in mind, I think I will just drop the queen back and plan on maybe chasing this bishop away next move with like a4, forcing it to go back. And maybe like b3, just kind of setting up my pawns in a way that sort of hinder. Okay, he's going to take it. So that's fine. I'm going to take with the knight, like I mentioned. And this is what I was talking about. If black takes this, there's still a queen trap. Rook's going to come over. It's the same idea as before. The queen has nowhere to go. You can't go here or here because the knight and the bishop. And okay, black wisely avoids that. So we do have on passant. Uh, do I want to do on passant? I'm leaning towards yes, because then it creates a, a backward pawn. I have to, but I think that makes sense. We can take, jump the knight over here, pile up on this pawn. Black's not going to be able to play d5 because I have one, two, three attackers, only two defenders, and the bishop is still going to be stuck. And it also unleashes my bishop to put pressure there. So with all those things considered, I will go ahead and take that. I'm expecting queen to take, yep. And now I think knight to c3. So there's an important thing. When you have a backward pawn to attack, you have to make sure that it can't move forward and just trade itself off. So for example, if I just play a random move here like, I don't know, king h1, and black is able to play d5, and I take and they take, they've just traded off that pawn, it's no longer a weakness, now their bishop can come out, and all of a sudden black's position is looking pretty nice. So I'm going to be very careful about my next move here, and I think I'm going to either play rook over, or what I'm leaning towards is knight to c3. And the reason is I'm adding a defender to that square so that if they try to play d5, I'm just going to be able to take it now because I have enough def uh, defenders, right? So that's kind of important. And another thing that I might do here is after I bring my, bring my rook over is I might actually move my knight to d5, which is another way of blockading it. And if the knight takes, I'm going to recapture with the queen. And if the queen takes, I'm going to recapture with the rook. The point is you have to leave that file open so I wouldn't want to recapture with the pawn I have to leave that file open so that your rooks can constantly put pressure on the the weak weak pawn okay so yeah um it seems like maybe bringing this rook over here is the best plan really it's a question of am I going to want to play f4 and use this or not I don't think so I think I'm going to focus on this side of the board and with that in mind I think this is probably the best move so let's go ahead and do that and I'm going to go here first or I play knight to d5 because, like I said, I want to be able to recapture with the rook and not the pawn. Because as soon as I have to take here with the pawn, I can't access that pawn anymore. I can't attack it anymore because the rook can't get there. So it's important to kind of leave that open, and that's a solid uh, target for me. All right, but now that we've positioned this, I think we are ready to bring the knight in. The other thing I could do is bring the bishop over here, but I like that it's controlling this diagonal right now. So I think I like knight to d5. Although, there's a line here, takes, takes, takes. What about the queen capturing here? I just noticed that. That would probably actually be okay for black. I don't think I want to allow that. So with that in mind, what should we do instead? Maybe I will play bishop g5. The point is, if I can get rid of that knight, this d5 square is just going to be amazing for my knight. It's going to totally, you know, be a better piece than the bishop. So yeah, I think maybe I will do that. Yes, there's a check. So maybe I want to prepare for this with like king to h1 first. That's what I'm thinking. Also have to keep an eye here. Black's rooks are about to come over. So, you know, I said I said that this is a weakness. It also kind of opens up the files for the rooks. And so there's a trade-off. And, and black might be able to use that. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go here. I did see this. But I also saw that after I move, if the queen takes, I still have that same queen trap available. So I'm not worried about it. So with that in mind, I'll go ahead and do this. And once I take here, either way and bring my knight in, uh, that's not going to be an option for black. So I think that's what I'm going to do most likely. Probably take and bring the knight in. Now, of course, okay, so the rook is attacking. There's also like b4 to just shut this down. But then what happens on rook c8? And then take, we hop the knight in, we lose a pawn, but then we're attacking some other stuff over here. Kind of a tricky position. But... I have two and a half minutes, so I want to be mindful of the time. So I think what I'm going to do, go ahead and take this. And let's see how black's going to recapture, because if they take with the bishop, 
can just invade. Okay, they took this way, which opens up their king. So I'm going to potentially shift my focus to the king because I have some really nice threats here. Let's go ahead and start with knight to d5. This is a very powerful move with a very immediate threat. So black has to deal with that. They don't have time to go pawn hunting. And what I'm looking for is... Okay, so they sort of stopped the fork, but they're going to lose a piece. That wasn't a good move. I will take the free piece. And here's what I'm talking about, right? We're playing at the 1,000 level. We're on move 20. Opponent played pretty well up to this point. He had the questionable decision of, you know, letting me take this knight. But other than that, they've played pretty well. But here's the mistake, right? And like I said, you can kind of expect usually one or two of these pretty big mistakes each game. And as long as you can take advantage of those, you're, you're going to win pretty much every game. So I'm just going to step to the side, get out of the check. And my knight actually is going to hop back here next move. And black's king is in trouble. Queen and the knight. Extremely good combo. So remember that. Especially when the knight has like an outpost to go to. Super dangerous for, for black now. I, I don't believe they're going to be able to stop getting checkmated. And there you go. That was the worst option. You can come in for the checkmate. Let's check the game review on that one. I think our opponent played pretty well. With the exception of those mistakes at the very end. 68, okay, so not, I was expecting that to be a little bit higher, but, um, you know, most of the game, there wasn't any major blunders, right? It, the opening was a little bit weird. Um, I kind of felt like they haven't studied much openings, which is fine. And then here, this was kind of a weird little maneuver. Okay, you can already see how I have, a, you know, a little bit of an advantage. Well, actually, you can't see that. Um, there you go, eval bar. You can already see I have a little bit of an advantage. Then they played pretty good. They defended the pawn. They, you know, started to attack stuff over here. They tried to trade off the bishop, which maybe that wasn't the greatest decision. Apparently, I was supposed to just... Was I supposed to just take that? Let's see. I was. Interesting. And then play a4. Hmm. Yeah, and so I was focused a little bit... Here's a good example, actually. Sometimes you can get too focused on... Something like this. They're so like, okay, double isolated pawns that you... That's all you can think about. That's kind of how I was in this game, right? I was had tunnel vision on, oh, double isolated pawns. I don't want to mess that up. So I didn't even really consider this too much because I didn't want to fix Black's pawn structure. But Stockfish is saying like, no, you should have done that. Played A4 and start opening up the position because I'm castled. I'm developed and Black is not. And so it was actually more important to focus on those features than the double isolated pawns so that's kind of a learning opportunity for me in this game as well but okay we get this opponents playing decent moves right pretty pretty good moves developing they castled they didn't really do anything wrong brought the rook over i think yeah i think they should have moved the other rook because this one got stuck in the corner so that would have been a slight improvement but for the most part they played pretty well until right here there was the kind of the big mistake right so to win at a thousand and eleven hundred you have to play the game without making those big mistakes and being able to capitalize on when your opponent makes those mistakes. And if you can do that, you're going to get past a thousand note without any problems. All right. Hope that makes sense. Let's play one more game for this video. I'm trying to make these videos a little bit shorter. I know an hour is a lot for some people. So let's play before somebody had asked for the, uh, oh no, we're not going to get to do it. You're a soft gambit. Can't play that against the French. All right. Well, we'll just play the two pawns in the center. Queen to f6. I don't believe I've ever seen that before. So w when somebody brings the queen out, the first thing that comes to my mind is like, can I start attacking it with my pieces and gain some time? So I'm thinking knight f3 so that I can play bishop g5. Just to gain some time. Gain some tempos on the queen. So let's do that. Knight f3. Queen g6. Okay. Interesting. Again, I'm thinking maybe bishop d3 lining up on the queen. I could even allow this with the idea of you know, my rook coming over, gaining some tempos on the queen. Should I do that? It's an aggressive way to play it, but I think I'm fine with that. So let's see if, if black is going to go for that. So we'll play bishop d3, allowing this because I have the follow-up rook g1. Okay, here we go. And queen's going to have to move. All right. Do I want to play here or not? That's the question. I can play it for free. It doesn't really cost me any time. It's just a question of would I rather my rook there or here. Black's queen's going to be forced to go here. The other thing that I could do is 
save that move for maybe later. Maybe it makes more sense. Yeah, I think I'll save it for right now and just keep developing. And you say, oh, Nelson, you're down a pawn. That's true, but look at this. One, two, three. I have four pieces that are doing something. Black is mostly undeveloped. So I am quite happy with my position right now. This is attacked, but it's defended. I'm not worried about it. Let's play bishop to f4, get another piece out there. And I am going to be castling queenside. Of course, I can't castle this way anymore. So that's the plan. Where do we want to put the queen? Well, it's defending the knight. So I think we have to go queen e2, unless I want to throw in this rook move first. Then I could play queen to d2. Hmm. Um... And I could also just strike at the center right away. I think, no, I think I want to get my queen here and castle first, and then, then we can start doing that. So let's go queen e2. I think that's a good, a good move. Getting ready to just castle right away. And once you kind of get all your pieces developed, there is a moment where you need to strike. You need to attack. You need to threaten something to make use of that. So if I just play too slowly, you know, I castle, and I move my rooks back and forth a couple times, Black's going to eventually develop their pieces, and my advantage will kind of go away. So that's something that you want to, you know, be thinking about. So I think I'm going to castle, and then that's going to be the moment where I start looking to, to do something. Maybe even e5 right now, or black can play e5. If they play e5 and I take and they take, it actually looks like black's position is, is kind of okay. So I'm thinking maybe I should play e5. Point is after takes, takes... Very dangerous for Black's King. So yeah, I think I will. And, you know, I'm kind of using my judgment here. Maybe it's better to castle first. I don't know. But I'm going to go ahead and strike with e5. And to look to take advantage of the fact that I have four pieces, a queen and a rook, all doing something. And Black basically just has a queen and a knight. Right? These aren't really doing much. So that's kind of the idea. Let's take here. Okay. So how do we want to recapture? Probably the knight, I'm thinking. I'm also scanning. I don't see anything, but I'm also scanning for other moves. Like, into g5 attacks the queen. Do I want to do that instead? Um, you know, do I want to leave this to open up my queen? No, I don't think so because the bishop. But those are the kind of things you want to at least think through. All right. So with everything uh, that's going on, I think we'll just take with the knight. Knight to d4. Interesting move. So it almost feels like there should be something right here. So let's see if we can find a good move here. Queen h5 doesn't work because the queen is there, unfortunately. I don't have time to play rook g3 at the moment because my queen's under attack. There's bishop to b5 check, but c6 is kind of the move I'm worried about. So I probably do have to move my queen. Queen to e4 looks like is going to be the best move. Because it centralizes it, it attacks the knight, it keeps an eye on the f3 square, so black doesn't have any ideas of that. Just keeps everything defended. Yeah, so I don't see a follow-up immediately. But I am going to play queen to e4, and black's going to have to deal with this threat. And I would like to castle, um, okay, c5. So again, I'm looking for tactics. Now there's no more c6, so if I play bishop b5 check, black would probably have to take me. And then my knight can hop in, and now I have threats of this. That looks pretty good. I could also just start with the knight first. And if the knight takes in, my bishop jumps in. Black can't block because I just take it. If they move, that doesn't look good. So that's definitely two ideas that I'm I'm liking the look of. What else do we have? Um, we don't have any queen traps, I don't think. I'm just kind of scanning like bishop f1. It looks like the queen has a couple of places that it could go to. Three. That gets pretty wild. It could just castle. They also like the look of that. So from a quick look, it looks like castle and queenside, knight to b5 and bishop to b5 are the moves. Castling is nice, gets my king very safe, and also brings in another piece. That's very good. This one is also very good because I don't know how black stops this. They don't really want to take this because then my bishop and knight are too strong. They'd have to do, if they go here, they get forked. If they go here, maybe that's playable. I don't see an immediate move after that. Doesn't look good for black. Also starting with the bishop. Again, there's that key. All right, so just because I don't see like any, you know, a, an immediate follow-up to that, I think I am gonna go ahead and castle. Now, one question I do have though is what happens on knight f6? I'm sure black would like to play that and attack my queen. So if I do castle, 
after knight f6, what's my move going to be? I want to have a, a good move in store for that. That's actually a pretty annoying move. Because where does my queen go? I mean, I can go all the way back to e1, but that just feels... That just feels a little bit weird. So maybe I do play knight to b5 just to keep the pressure up. I still have to deal with knight f6, but I could probably... Throw in the check. The king goes over there. No, then I have to... Hmm. Very annoying move. Knight to f6. Just because only because my queen doesn't have, like... Too many great places to go to. I could play like bishop g5. This is a super uh, complicated position. There's so many options here. I wonder if I can even play a move like knight to d5. Stops the knight f6 problem. You would just take it. Although, maybe black could recap. Yeah, this is wild. I was thinking of this if I have some discover check, but my queen's under attack, so I don't think I do. So castles, knight f6. Do I really have to play queen to e1? That's the only thing that I don't like about that. That's the only thing. There's got to be a killer move here. I just don't know what it is. A queen g6 takes, takes. No, I don't. I don't quite have enough pieces. Maybe after I cast. All right, we're gonna castle, and then if knight f6 happens, we're gonna find a move. So, and this is. I'm pretty sure Black's gonna play this. Yeah. So what if I? My default sort of move is gonna be like queen e1, which I feel like there's got to be something better. I just don't know what it is. That would be so cool if there's like a checkmate here. I don't quite see it. I don't. Th I don't think I can get away with sacking my queen like that. Okay, so with all that in mind, probably queen e1. I could. I mean, I could allow a queen trade. I could allow a queen trade, and I would still have a good position. I would still have a very good position. Because I'm only down a pawn. I have so many pieces. So maybe that is the the thing to do. Because queen e1 just feels so awkward. All right, let's play. Let's play this. So with a minute and thirty six seconds on the clock, I'm gonna have to obviously change my strategy a little bit of trying to find the winning move. And you could argue that I've already spent too much time. Um, so let's just play a little bit faster. I'd like to trade that off. I really need to get rid of this knight and just open up the files for the rooks, sorry. And there should be a checkmate somewhere. Like there's, there's no way, no way that there's not like a checkmate in this position. I just haven't been able to find it. <laughs> so let's see, let's go knight b5, I think. And trying to get rid of the knight. I'd be happy to take here because it unleashes the rook. Threatening this. Okay, now you can see the power of these pieces. And it's just a matter of finding the, the winning combination without running out of time. And I think I actually see... Is that checkmate? So, interesting game. Uh, yeah, three mistakes, three bunders. I felt like I was missing something. So let's take a look at this one. This is a good example, though, of how... 78-53, and let's take a look. Opponent makes a, a questionable decision to bring out the queen early. We take advantage of that by allowing this capture. Okay, attack the queen. And here, instead of knight c3, the computer wanted to move bishop to f1. And the reason is incredible. Watch this, guys. Watch this. Bishop to f1 attacks the queen. Let's look carefully. Where can the queen move to? You can't take the pawn. You can't go here because the knight. You can't go here, here, here because the rook. You can't take this because the queen. You can't go here because the pawn. You can't go here because the bishop. So you only have one move with your queen right here. Only square. Okay. So you go there and then bam, rook to g5. Let's look again. Can't go here. Can't take that. You can't go here or here because the rook. You can't take this. You can't go here. You have to go to here. Only move. H6. And then bam, rook to f5. Unleashes the bishop. Where does the queen go? Well, you can't go here, or here, or here, or here. Only move. Queen to g6. And I say only move. Of course, black could decide to just trade the queen for the rook and the bishop, but then you're losing your queen. So only move to save the queen. Queen to g6. Knight to e5, leaving the rook sitting here, going for that queen. You can see the, the possibilities that open up here because that queen is a target. It's a high-value target. All these moves wouldn't be possible otherwise, but they are. Again, where does the queen move to? You can't go there, 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 you, can't go there, you have to go to g1. Okay. Rook to g5. Keep attacking it. Now I can go here in the corner or I can take the pawn. What happens if it actually just goes in the corner? Ah, then you play knight to f3. <laughs> Look at this. This is so funny. The next move you play rook g1. There's nothing black can do to stop you. Bam. Queen is trapped. That's incredible. Okay, but the other option is you could take the pawn. Then rook h5. Okay, where's the queen gonna go? Only move. Queen to g1. Queen to f3. 
and you're going to trap the queen next move. There's nothing the queen can do because you can't go here. You can't go here. You can't go here. Look at these pieces. Sorry, look at these pieces. Wow, that is incredible. So black does something, and then bam, rook h1. Queen is trapped. Eight moves later. That's incredible. That's incredible. Of course, I didn't see all that. But it just goes to show you, even as early as move, what move is this? Bishop f1 would have been played on move six. As early as move six, we have a forced queen trap. That's insane. But it goes to show you can't, you just can't play chess this way. You, you just can't do it. I mean, you can, but you shouldn't. And it's not going to end well for you, right? So I didn't see all that. I just decided to develop. And here, bishop f1 is also coming up as a good move. Also, knight to b5, just immediately starting to threaten some stuff that's hard for black to deal with. Okay. I played bishop f4. Again, knight to b5 was a good move that I probably should have played because this is a very annoying threat because the queen is no longer there. How does black defend that pawn? You got to probably move your king, which is not a good, a good move, right? Like, let's say you have to play king d8 or something. Oh, and then you go knight g5. Look at that with the double thread here. And whew, I mean, this is just incredible. So I missed that. Very nice. Very nice idea that I totally w wasn't on my radar. So I should have been looking for that. Okay. But even here, after a less than optimal move, I still have a, f a fine position. Like my position is not bad, right? E5 takes, takes, okay, take. Let's see. Let's see. What was the best move here? It should be five checks coming up on, on the list there. Queen to d2. Interesting. Why? I wonder why queen d2. Anyway, let's keep going. Queen e4. Not the best choice. c5. Again, bishop to b5 check. So I was thinking about playing. Castling is not terrible, but it's not really the greatest. After knight to f6. Okay, I should have just went bishop b5 check. Again, just, just opening those lines. So what actually happens here after the capture? Oh, that's a cool move. Queen to a4. So you essentially... Give up the bishop temporarily to open up a square for the queen. And on bishop d7, I guess you just take. Yeah, you just take everything. And you're about to checkmate the king. Mate in three. Wow. Wow. Okay. So this was an interesting game for me even as well. And then black made some questionable moves. And then the knight finally came in. And now you can see uh, just checkmate. Okay. Story of that game though. A forced queen trap on move six. I don't think I've ever seen that before. I don't think I have. That, that's fascinating to me. Bishop to f1. Sorry, not here. Bishop to f1 here. Amazing. Anyway, I hope you guys learned something from that. Uh, don't bring out your queen early. It very rarely ends well. And I'll see you guys next time. Stay sharp, play smart, and take care.